Hey everyone, Winston Goodfellow here with the boss of Barrett Jackson, Craig Jackson, standing between two boss 429s. So there's my tacky introduction for the day. Dude, how's the auction going? Phenomenal. From the opening weekend, our family day, to doing our future collector car show, which was an unbelievable hit. And then leading into our opening night party, 6,000 yes. of our closest friends. <laughs> it was a ruckus affair. And that always sets the tone. Monday, when we sang the national anthem, afterwards, I had to take a picture. There wasn't an empty seat in the house. This is what's crazy to me, is this year, attendance really seems to be up. Way you know, up. Because like yesterday seemed like a Friday or a Saturday. I mean, yes, it was crazy. We used all the parking over at the Phoenix Open yesterday. So we're coming up with plan B to start using the new soccer fields today and tomorrow. So, okay, here's a running joke that Craig and I have, which is on an old Saturday Night Live skit, for those of you that will remember this. So, Craig, what you're saying is the auction business has been very, very good to me. Yes, it has. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Why don't we just start with the bosses? So you got a 69 and a 70. 69 and a 70 boss. You know, we'll start here. They're great cars, these pair. And they kick off such a great run of muscle cars, if you want to go down here. Was, yeah, we can wander. Then you've got a Hemi Superbird. The, the Daytonas and the Superbirds have been on fire with Hemis. We sold one here last year, uh, Daytona, for a million dollars. And we sold one in Vegas for a million five. Did you really? Yeah. That's and, an and the, absolute a, world a, a record. A Daytona or a Superbird? A Daytona. So well, did, didn't that guy, didn't they own it at one time or something like that? No, he Scott? missed the one in Scottsdale and he's standing there going, I'm not walking away without it again. So, and you know, you auctioneers just really dislike it. What two guys have to have, something. have to have it. Yeah. And that's happened here already on Monday. We uh, started off selling a car for over a hundred thousand on Monday, two on Tuesday. Hit a quarter million on Wednesday with a uh, GTO. So it was unbelievable. Numbers that you normally would start seeing, you know, the day after, yeah. everything has moved forward. Super Friday today is gonna be unbelievable. What, do you, what are you attributing that to, if you can attribute <laughs> to anything? Because I've been kind of waiting for, you know, the bump up in interest rates and stuff to start affecting people's pocketbooks. Doesn't seem to be happening at all in a number of spaces in the collector car. I think it, it's a few things, you know. For the gate, you see so many Canadians back. So many people yes. are out traveling. So our gate's phenomenal. You have high interest rates, which are making people think, well, my cash is going nowhere. I need to do something, so why not buy a hard asset? I think the pandemic for a lot of the play toy cars has made us realize that you're not going to live forever. Might as well go out and enjoy life. Buy a hard asset, drive it, have fun. Sounds reasonable. It all to sort me. of came together, and we, we are in the live entertainment, hard asset, and play toy business. Speaking of live entertainment, talk about the transaction that happened with a business uh, last year. So I brought in IMG Endeavor uh, Global. Uh, they're the best at live events, media. The entire organization of Endeavor, William Morris, the uh, biggest talent agency in the world. And they bring in so many things. When you look at Barrett Jackson, all the different things that I do, live entertainment, we're gonna add more stuff in that world. Uh, sponsorships, licensing. And so live entertainment, you mean like the con, you know, because you do a concert on your welcoming. On yeah, your Sunday you're, night you're party probably see us step that up a little bit, all the artists they represent. But there are tentacles worldwide to just take this to the next level. I took it as far as I could take it. This is still all of us this year, what yep. we've done. But they're all here. They brought 43 people from around the world that run all the different they divisions. Go, they even go into China. They go everywhere. Correctly. They they have offices everywhere. Ari Emanuel was here yesterday walking around just, just like a kid in candy store. He just loves this, but he has a vision what he has built Endeavor into. And those that don't know, he is the character in Entourage. So <laughs> he, uh, he is a ball of energy, his staff. And one thing we've realized, he has hired some of the smartest but nicest people. They helped us in 30 days put a whole new app together. So you punch in a car there, 
you can find it on the property. It, it walks you to oh, the car. They're taking all their technology that they have for all their other live events and custom tailoring it and bring it into Barrett Jackson. And trust me, when he's impressed by that, because this to, you're really Mr. Technology in the auction space because he was doing stuff that other guys weren't. Years before, it caught on with others. Yeah, I, we were I on the internet in 95. We were streaming in 96, live bidding. And we've been live bid streaming since 96 on. Well, then the, the other thing is that I I just laugh at this is because what Craig does is he meets with uh, anyone who is consigning a car. His team meets with them. They figure out an approximate value on what they think it's going to go for. And then he immediately gives them a line of credit so they can go out and buy something else. Yes. <laughs> we, we, we believe that if you come into the hobby, and on a, when you look at the stats, a lot of people come as a spectator. Then they want to become a bidder. Then they're a buyer. Then they want to sell that car and buy another car. And that gets them into the hobby. A lot of our best collectors that are buying from us started that way, and they want to just understand the process, see what they like. They may buy a car. Yep. You know, I have a lot of people come here to buy a specific car, and I see them leave with something completely different. You know, I want a numbers matching muscle car, and out they roll an Arresto mod because they decided, you know what? I want to drive it every day. We sell the best numbers matching muscle cars like this Hemi Cuda the Baldwin motion car, ZL1, you've got muscle car royalty right yes. in this area, the best resto mods, customs. There's one over on the far wall over there that Dave Kindig built a 53 Corvette out of all carbon fiber and made a Barrett Jackson edition car. So it's got our logos on it, painted black and red. You know, we love it when the best artists in the world want to make a car for Barrett Jackson and sell it at no reserve. Yes. You know, it's fun for me seeing the two bosses down here. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I jumped in one of those, I thought it was going to be a friggin' pig on the road. That's a fantastic driving car. It is, because it's, even though it's got a big engine in it with those big hemi head, aluminum yes. hemispherical heads on it, it doesn't drive bad. Uh, if you put headers on them, they drive a lot better, but they had it to was... smog them down a little. But that was made to compete against this. That's exactly actually that on the super speedways they needed an engine that would flow at the super speedways so this led to having to make those so they could make enough cars so that then they could homologate the car for nascar and that the boss engine when one is running right the 429 it's a friggin' honey because what really surprised me about it was if you put something over the tachometer i had no clue whether i was turning a thousand or six thousand it was so smooth mm -hmm. it was like a bentley w12 yeah they were all built hand built engines you know those were very special cars i'm glad they're getting the respect they need you know and we sell modern supercars you know we've got a great lineup of four gts f40 going at no reserve and i saw your 550 barquetta i spent some time with one of those yeah. ages ago that's kind rod of, that's stewart's car so it's got a you, you have rod stewart's car here's kuntash no that's his uh oh his barquetta his barquetta oh no kidding yeah um, we have a lot of celebrity cars here and i think you'll start seeing a lot more of that and a lot of celebrities coming out in the sports world that img represents looking forward to it it's interesting because going over to the baldwin motion so these guys, if memory serves me correctly, were in New York, and they, they were basically, you know, they were more than a tumor. Well, they, they really were one of the ones that started doing these uh, engine transplants before Copos were built. So it was Yanko and Baldwin that really started. And Nikki Chevrolet. And Nikki yeah. Chevrolet. They were really the three that started putting these, these engines in before General Motors would allow it through the Copo, which is what the ZL1 is. Yeah, and so Copo means central office production order. Yeah. And then, uh, if memory shows me correctly, the biggest engine you could get in these back in the day was a 396. A 396, so couldn't go over 400 cubes. And central office production order is where police order their police cars. So they made the exceptions so you could put a bigger engine, a higher performance engine, a police car. So they ordered 50 through the back door. This is one of the last 19 cars, this ZL1. It is number 61, so that means it can have options on it. Because the first 50, other than car three, were all dog dish hubcaps, either yeah. automatics on the column. Which is which is so whack when yeah. you think about it for something that, that heavy duty. 
Talk a little about the ZL1 because a lot of people know the L88 that that's in quotes the top of the pecking order, but it's not. The ZL1 is actually a step above that. Yes, and I was just talking to one of the experts on the ZL1s. I have one. Bought oh, what it from, a surprise. Can you shock me again. Yes. Uh, bought it 1988 from the original owner. Oh, good for you. My dad told me I was an idiot when I was paying for a cut-up drag car. And I told him, this is the SJ Duesenberg of our generation. Yes. Barrett, you're an idiot. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, got, I remember in those cars, he'd tell me, I remember when those cars are brand new. And I, I'm Tom, and I'm certain uh, there's guys that remember when Duesenbergs are brand new and weren't worth anything either. So the generations keep changing, but these are one of those iconic cars. It's an all aluminum 427. And originally they were designed for Jim Hall for, to go race the Chaparrales. Block is a little different. It's not set up for a dry sum, but they took that basic casting with Zora Duntoff and they wanted a lightweight engine in the front for drag racing to do yes. the, the weight transfer to the rear. Made, as I said earlier, 50, in the initial run, Fred Gid Chevrolet had to order 50 of them to make it so they could go race these. And they are $4,160 engine option on a $2,727 MSRP base Camaro. So the engine basically cost twice as much. My car was over $8,000 brand new because it has the most options of any ZL1 on it. The last 19 cars are the rarest because this one has a uh, radio in it and uh, spoilers on it. Mine's a rally sport with all sorts of other stuff. Most of them are drag cars. Most of them had a hard life, uh, but that's what they were that's made right. for. That's right, driven hard and put away wet as the same Yeah, goes. My, my car had the rear wheels cut of it cut out of it the first day. He took it out on the street, he told me. It went totally sideways on him. He goes, well, it's pretty worthless with these tires and turn it into a drag car. <laughs> and and so how many sets of tires on the car have you gone through, Mr. Jackson? A couple. Haven't I taken you out in that one? No. Okay, I'll take you out in that one. A oh. ZL1 is what is the real McCoy. Yes. Uh, it is 12 and a half to one compression, the largest camshaft ever put into a big block from the factory. It lopes at about 1800 RPM. It won't idle any lower. It's, yeah. It is just a nasty engine made to just run at high RPMs on the drag strip. And that's what it was built for. How does, and would you say an L88 is a little bit more civilized? It is. An L88 was made to run on the street. Uh, same compression, just not as much cam in them. And it has the same aluminum heads. But, so, a, but a cast iron block? Is a that cast a iron block, which makes it a little bit more drivable on the street. Yeah. Uh, the, these were not made to have the heat cycles every day in and out. These were made to run down the drag strip, and that's what they did. And they were wicked for their time. They're an iconic car, and General Motors brought it back in the new Camaro. Yes, and, uh, but it, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the rare limited production like this was. This was one of those cars where, don't tell dad. They <laughs> <laughs> yeah. bypassed uh, legal, bypassed all the guys up on the top floor until they were winning and all of a sudden, oh, that was a great idea. <laughs> well, then, then the other thing is a lot of these are kind of sleepers because when you look at color combo on this, like there's there's no oh, graphics and package. And dog dish hubcaps. Yeah, there's and... no graphics package. Just like, okay, pal, you want to race? Done. Trivia. ZL1s do not say the engine on the front fender. And on a ZL1 Rally Sport, they made two. I have one of them. It does not say it here, and it does not. It only says Camaro here. So they are very much sleepers. Uh, they were these... Hemi Cudas, Boss 9s, they would have lined up on a street and gone racing or on a track. And back in the day, the street they were racing on was Woodward Avenue. Yep. So it was interesting because I was talking with Jim Wangers, who was, uh, he was involved in the Pontiac GTO effort and that type of stuff. And he, to uh, he told me something fascinating, which was Woodward Avenue was not created by accident. And I've always wanted to find a, what, what exactly did you mean by that statement? And uh, That's the road that ties Detroit yes. to Pontiac. And that's where I was born, Pontiac. So I have uh, this kind of DNA in my blood. And you know now we are building resto mods and we're selling the best customs resto mods. The market is so broad nowadays. And I think that is fueling all this excitement. 
You know, it's sort of like vintage racing. If you have the real one, you're allowed to sort of get a clone if you want to go out and beat on it. Uh, now you can have a numbers matching muscle car and a resto mod you can drive every day. Well, it's interesting because I've almost watched the resto mod industry in, I can't say it grew up around Barrett Jackson, but you guys were the first guys that were into it because I remember back in the day, a lot of my colleagues would just poo poo the whole resto mod thing. And now it's gigantic. You have Resto Mod 250 short wheelbases, you know, Lancia Stratos's, and it's just. It's Eagle building the Series 1 uh, Jags. Yes. Trucks. We have, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollar Resto Mod Broncos. I have two of Simon Cowell's cars here. He is selling a uh, Triumph that he sent back to England and had Resto Modded and an MG. And uh, he did them the way he wanted. He spent ungodly amounts of money making him what he yeah. wanted to yep. drive. Yep. He drove them for a few years. They're here selling at no reserve, and you also get two tickets to America's Got Talent. <laughs> Buying them straight from Simon Cowell. So you can resto mod anything. Yes, you can resto mod anything, but you have to be careful on the shops you use. Yeah. Because there are some shops that make them look pretty, and there are some shops that make them look pretty and drive right. Yep, and we have in the Corvette world, Jeff Hayes builds the best C2 Corvettes resto mods on the planet uh, joe clevenger builds the best c1s and then over there is the dave kindig one-off barrett jackson carbon fiber 53 corvette that he built from scratch it's not a resto mod but it's, it's a, his interpretation of a, of a modern 53 corvette he changed the dimensions so someone six foot two can get in yep, and out yep. of it change the windshield so the wind goes over you, but you tuck down in the car. He really thought it out well, and he's a master craftsman. So then the question becomes, are you gonna step off the block and bid? Never know. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> so. I'll tell you one, when I did the first look on the Hemi purple car, and I, how I ended it, I'll see you on the auction block. <laughs> It would match a convertible I have that you I've drove. Been, yes, yes, I did drive that, and then you drove it first, if I'm remembering yeah. correctly. And so, this is when Craig had another place, and we're out on Scottsdale uh, Avenue. I don't even think the thing was thing was warm. And so here comes some traffic, and Craig just pulls out in his Hemi Cuda convertible, which back then was a pretty penny, and now it's a pretty dollar. <laughs> and it's just like. Craig just hammered it and the rear end's fish tailing like this in front of him and he's got this maniacal grin on his face. It was just, in case you hadn't figured it out by now, everyone, this dude's just a big kid who's done really, really well. Yeah, I am. I love what I do for a living, you know, and uh, I, I'm up to 100 cars in my personal collection and I love driving them. I just got a Z06, uh, the new modern one. What a fun toy that is. We're going to have to go play. Oh, that car is awesome. It's a it's an American-made Ferrari. Oh, yes. Just that flat plane crank and the way it sounds and the revs. It's unbelievable. It's just that, that to me, was such an easy call. Like when you look at, okay, what are cars that you can immediately bank on that's in quotes the instant collectible? Yeah. That was one. And I really lament that I did not go. First day that thing was announced, go yeah. place an order. Because that, that was money in the bank. It was yeah. so apparent. You have to sign a deal. You won't sell it for a year. Bought another fun toy, which I just brought in today, an Escalade V. So it's got the black wing drivetrain yeah. under it. And it's who paddle shifts an Escalade. And, and you hear the blower whine on. I mean, the cars right now, I think we're back in 1970. Yes. Before we really all go into electrification or hydrogen or wherever it goes, they are building some cool cars right now. And I'm putting a lot of that last gen of the pure petroleum supercars away. How do you see, beyond what you just said, because it's clear, clear what you're thinking, mm -hmm. how do you see electrification affecting the industry? And do you think that there will come a time, at least in your tenure, where we'll start seeing a number of electric cars or electric wrestle mods or electric anything? Well, we're already here? selling some here. So we, there's a company in Arizona, we're selling a Cadillac convertible that's been electrified. Uh, Electro mods, which is the new term, you are going to start seeing more electro mods, and I'll bet in the future we see hydro mods. Yes. So you're going to see hydrogen powered. Yes. These bodies, these iconic bodies, we're just going to keep doing heart transplants on them so we can keep driving. So them. all we got to do then is call them Carol Shelby with a yeah. heart transplant. Whatever makes it go fast, you know, 
I bought a P1. I didn't buy one when I was offered one brand new. Yep. I was like, ah, I don't know about this whole hybrid thing. And then I drove one to do a first look, and I was like, okay, I made a mistake. I should own <laughs> one of these. This thing's an animal. The electric gets you up out yes. the hole before the turbos kick in. Then when you have that transition of the electric with the turbos, it just throws you back in the seat. But what I love about the P1 is those wastegates are right behind your yep. head. Yep. And you hear the turbo spool up and second you let off, it shuts the wastegates. And it is such a visceral sound, but that electric out of the hole is just unbelievable. So how many tires, set of tires have you gone through on that? Or is it too new to torture? It's too new to have tortured yeah. it yet. Yeah, I'm on my ninth set of tires on the Bugatti. <laughs> Outstanding. So he's talking about his Veyron. <laughs> yeah. And those ain't cheap, Mr. No. Jackson. No. You know, when I do burnouts in, that was probably a $10,000 burn. <laughs> yeah. I did burnouts down here. I turned off all the controls because I wanted to see if it was true. We put four GoPros on it if I could do four wheel burnouts. And? Oh, yeah. You can smoke all four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is this is what Mrs. Jackson just loves you. <laughs> oh man, yeah, Carol, if you're out there, hello. I am a big kid. Oh, and yeah. it keeps me young. You know, I don't feel old at all. I feel there's an 18 year old inside of me that just loves taking cars out and smoking the tires and having fun. And I've known you almost 30 years, I would mm. guess. Yeah. Back when I was Mr. Skeptical. Yeah. <laughs> Is, well, um, it actually came to fruition, isn't it? All Every car here sells, and it's real. Well, uh, I'll give you guys the backstory on this because it's fun. You know, we need to do a podcast together so we can kind of get into some of the old school stuff. Yeah. You know, when you don't have... People you know, didn't think that selling all these cars at no reserve could actually be real. I said, stand up on the block, go in the office, pull any file you want, and see if it's real. I won't even stand around. Go for it. It was so real. Real, real quickly, I'm just going to be dead honest here. There was some shenanigans going on on the auction block, and this was before. This was like your first year at the company, mm -hmm. and I put it in print, and Craig went friggin' ballistic, but with good reason because he had the intent of taking it to what you see now. Yeah, and I said I don't put up with that stuff. The stuff that the other auction companies do, those aren't my rules. My rules are keep the car on the money. The worst thing is, is when uh, when we had reserve cars and you run it past the money. And yes. then somebody said, the owner says, we'll drop the hammer. Beep, 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 beep. We're back and back down to where real money is. Why? Just put the car on the money. When the car sells, it's pure transparency. That's the way it should be. And that's what we're about. And that's, that's what I saw. Was this shenanigans going on? I put it in print. And uh, I'm getting the signal in the back that we got to do this. But great to see you. Yeah. This and, is a 100% straight operation. And he, and he ain't lying. Otherwise, a public company wouldn't have bought us <laughs> Good to or see partnered you. with and us. And we need to go play with stuff when all this is done with. Yep. I got my, my collections getting pretty much tuned in. Cool. Thanks so much, everyone. And we'll see you somewhere else real soon. All right.